Okay, so that's the little blues we're going to be looking at. We're going to be learning how to play the half step whole step scale and how to insert that into just a standard blues just to make it sound a little more sophisticated. So we'll be talking through all of those concepts in this video. If you like the tablature and the note for note breakdown for what I just played, you can get that by going to activemelody.com slash micro and do a search for ML072. Okay, so one of the concepts that I struggled the most with in terms of just comprehension as it relates to music theory, just basic understanding, playing guitar, is how and when to use a diminished scale. First of all, the half step whole step scale is that one spot when I was playing that little intro. That's all predictable stuff, right? Standard blues. Right, and then All of a sudden, it sort of gets out of the box there for a minute. And that is the half step, whole step scale. It's like stepping out of the box. What you're doing is you're playing what would be a diminished chord. You're playing, you know, you could work that chord in. So let's start off and just talk about how you can work in diminished chords into your blues because the scales follow the chords. Really, the scales are just spelling out what the chords are anyway. And I think if you understand where these fit in, then knowing how, to, how and when to play that half step, whole step scale is gonna make a lot more sense. So if we're playing, and I'm doing this in the, the key of B, you could do this in any key, obviously. It's just a one, four, five blues, but our chords are gonna be a B and then uh, an E, or an, I'm playing an, an E9, um, and then there's an F sharp or an F sharp nine. Then we go back to our B. Um, if you were playing diminished chords into your blues, so if I wanted to inject some kind of jazzy uh, diminished chords into that, here are the spots where you can do it. We're gonna play the one, there's the four, quick change to the four, back to the one, that's standard, right? Now watch this. Hear that? All of a sudden, before I went back to the four chord, I switched into this diminished chord. It's actually a diminished seven chord. And this chord is, here's how I think of it. There's probably somebody that's gonna correct me and say, no, no, you're, you're saying it all wrong, but this is how I think of it. It makes, it makes sense to me. Whatever your one chord is, in this case, it's a B chord, you play the, the one sharp diminished chord. So if our one chord is a B chord, let's just look at the notes on our first string. I go up one. That would be a, a, a B sharp or a C. Obviously, this a B sharp is a C. And I would put my pinky there. And then these three fingers are making up what look like a D chord shape. If you think of a D chord in first position, obviously they're on a different set of strings, strings two, three, and four. But that is a the, the sharp diminished. That would be like a C diminished or C diminished seven chord. But I don't think of it like the C. I just think of whatever my one chord is, I go up a step, which would make it sharp. And then that is the tension needed to release to the four chord. Okay, so that's the first spot. And when you have that, you can hear it, listen. Okay, so that's the spot where it is. It's happening right before you get to the to the four chord, whether you do the quick change or not. The quick change is just when you quickly change the four chord and then back. That's some blues do that and some don't do the quick change. Either way though, before you actually get to the officially get to the four chord, you can work in that diminished chord. Now where that chord is, that's where I would play the scale. You could also play the arpeggio, but we're gonna look at this half step, whole step scale. So if I'm making that chord, we'll go back to the chord, look at where your index finger is. In this case, it's on the seventh fret, fourth string. So we're gonna do this little pattern. Now this is what I love about this scale, 
And we're really only gonna look at the top four strings. I think once you get down strings five and six, it's where people start to get confused. I know I do, I start to fumble a little bit, but on these top four strings, I can nail this thing because it's so easy to visualize. Look at this, watch this. We're gonna go seven, nine, 10. That's on the fourth string. And then on the third string, we're gonna go seven, eight, 10. Okay, so what we have is seven, nine, ten, seven, eight, ten. We're gonna follow that same pattern on strings two and one. We're gonna go seven, nine, ten, and then seven, eight, ten. Now, if you look at what's going on there pattern wise, you can see that that fits into your minor pentatonic scale pattern one. Hopefully, you can connect these two just so that it starts to become easy. So when we're playing a B, We've got our B minor pentatonic right there. And then inside of that, you've got this half step, whole step thing. So now that you can see the parameters of the scale, you can start to change the order. You don't have to just play right through the scale. You can go like this. As long as you land on one of the notes from the four chord, that's the key. And, and you have to just use your ear and use some timing. But there's three notes that are gonna work really well. This note, this note, or this note. These are the, that's the triad for your four chord. And you can see where that triad is in relation to your one chord. As long as I land on this note, this note, or this note, this is your one, three, and you're five. So what I'm talking about is, see what I did? I slid into that note there, which is the three of that E chord. Or I could go, or I could do it backwards. And play it down here. As long as I'm landing on the one, the three, or the five of that four chord, that's your safest bet. You could technically land on the seven of it as well, or the flat in seven. But let's just, for now, really, that's those are your main three. Those are the main three tones that make up that four chord. And so it's really just the timing thing. It's getting the timing down. And so there's your one. Quick change to the four. Back to the one. I went into the four, now it was a sloppy way to do it. But you can see, I'm just playing those notes that I showed you from that pattern. So that's the first little thing I wanted to point out was uh, in playing the half step, whole step scale, that's one of the most obvious places to play it is getting from the one chord to the four chord. And you'll see lots of videos, if you if you do some search research online, you'll see videos of Robin Ford and various other YouTubers talking about it. But that's what's going on there. That's just sort of my simple way of, of analyzing. Now, what's nice about this half step, whole step scale, since it's we're talking about a diminished scale, you know, just like with the chord, and some of you know this, some of you may not know this, but you can take that same chord, slide it up three frets this way, it's the same chord. Slide it up three more frets, and it's the same chord. What I mean by the same chord is it's those same four notes, but they're just changed, the order is changed each time you do it. Same if you go this way. So you have infinite directions either way, as long as you're going up three frets. The, my point in telling you that is this half step, whole step scale works the same way. So where I've got this little pattern that I showed you between the seventh fret and the 10th fret, if I come up here now and put my index finger on the 10th fret, I can play that same pattern. So I can do that this way or this way. So any little lick that I learn, I can play it in multiple spots. So that's getting from the one to the four using that half step, whole step. Now, the other place that you hear it in the blues is once we're on our four chord. So here's our one, right? So we're on our four chord. We're gonna go back to the one chord, right? So we go four, four sharp diminish, back to the one chord, okay? So four, which is our E, E sharp diminish, well, E sharp is an F, and then we go back to the, to the one chord, which is our B. And so uh, the same principle applies then. So if I look at 
where I'm making this scale, where my index finger is on the fourth string, this is gonna to start to connect. Oh, we just went over this. Where my index finger is on that fourth string, you can use that same pattern. As long as you land on, the, on either the one, the three, or the five of your one chord. Same principle, same kind of thing. So you, whatever your four chord is, in this case, what I like to do, if I'm playing this D9, or this E9, like this, where my pinky is, I just go ahead and put my pinky down there, make this chord shape, and then I'm back in position to, to play the one chord. Now I know what's gonna happen. Somebody out there is gonna see this chord, and there's, you're gonna say, hey wait, you're calling that an F diminished chord, but isn't that really a B diminished chord? Because that note's, that's the, the, the note from the chord. Yeah, it's a B diminished chord too. It's the same chord. All four of these notes, are the same. You can call this any of those four and you'd be right. That's kind of how it works because it's the same four notes re repurposed as you move up and down. So this would be like your sharp um, sharp four chord, which brings you back to the one. And so I can use the same little transition. Now that time I played more of an arpeggio. So some of that's gonna come down to you really kind of working it out, looking at this half step, whole step. And how you go from that four chord to that half step, whole step scale. Up to your one chord. Now the other way you can do it that sounds a little better and in some ways it's easier is to play the arpeggio of it. Let me just show you. I'll put the tab up on the screen. But here's the arpeggio of that. And this arpeggio works for any of these half step, whole step. So, so connect the arpeggio to the half step, whole step pattern that we just went through. But if we're here, looking at this F, or think of it like your four sharp diminished seven chord or your F, uh, it's really your F diminished chord, diminished seven chord. If we look at that half step, whole step scale and connect the arpeggio to it, it looks like this. So it's the same notes that are in that little scale. I'm just singling out the notes of the arpeggio. And then there's two more on the first string. So those are your notes. So you can use any of those as well. That's just a little more consolidated version. But the same principle applies. You have to take it from that, and then you have to land on the one, the three, and the or the five of the one chord. So. It came up here to the three, right? From this chord shape. So, so hopefully a light bulb went off and you say, oh, I don't, have, I don't have to just land on this chord shape. I can land on any of the chord shapes from Caged. So it starts to unlock the whole thing, right? Using this, this concept. But those are the, like the, the two main places to get from the one chord to the four chord. Here we go, right here. One sharp diminished to the four chord. Okay, tension release and then four sharp diminished to get us back to the one chord. Hang out on the one chord, we go to the five chord. And then instead of playing, the, this is the last place you can do it, the last obvious place. You go to the five chord, and then instead of just going to the four chord, you go four sharp diminished again. So five, four sharp diminished, and then back to your one chord. That's another, another little spot you can work it in. But try using either the half step, whole step scale or the arpeggio, but it's that diminished arpeggio that you're connecting to those. Make sure you connect it to the chord though and you understand the chords. The last thing I'll say on this is in order for you to really be able to do it, you have to hear it first. And that's why I struggled the most with this. I could not hear it. I was not, I didn't listen to enough music that had that in it. That's probably a part of it. And I just couldn't, I couldn't sing it. Like if I were to sing you the pentatonic scale, I could do that. But if I, if you asked me to sing the half step, whole step scale out loud, I couldn't do it. I can now and I can hear it, but I couldn't. So I had to just keep playing it and listening to it 
And then all of a sudden I would listen to someone like Larry Car Carlton or um, Robin Ford playing and I would hear it. It would pop out at me and I'd go, oh, that they're doing it now. Now I can hear it. But until you can hear it, you, you can't really play it or it's harder to play it. But I would start all of this by learning the chords and being able to play the chords first. Once you can do that, then you can go back and pencil in the arpeggio or that half step, whole step scale. And remember, if you're a premium member, you'd have access to the tablature that I played in the intro. It's got uh, those scales in a few spots and I've kind of uh, called that out in the tab. All right, we'll see you in the next video.